Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Now before we start this video I'd just like to apologise that I've not put anything up on the channel for a little while. Uh, there's been uh, two main reasons for this. Uh, the first is I've been super busy with uh, work. We're right in the middle of our busy season at the moment. And secondly I've been kind of addicted to Breath of the Wild on the Switch. Uh, however, we're going to go ahead and dive into a video today. Uh, we're going to be looking at this. This is the KK Moon DOS 138 uh, TFT handheld digital pocket oscilloscope kit. So we're going to have a look at the assembly of this today and then in future videos we're going to have a look at its functions. Okay, so taking a closer look at what we get in the pack, uh, we've got the main board here. Now this board has its SMD components already uh, soldered in place. Uh, you can get a version of this without the SMD components in place. Uh, however, without the appropriate equipment that can be quite tricky. We've got the uh, 2.4 inch TFT LCD display here. And we've got our through hole components. Uh, so at the top here we've got some standoffs. Then we have uh, various different types of header pins, some push buttons. Uh, this is the uh, connector for the BNC leads, which are just here. It's a power jack, some slide switches, uh, some transistors. Uh, these here are potentiometers and then various different types of capacitors. We've got some diodes and some resistors and a green LED. Panning across, we've got the uh, test leads themselves. This is the clear plastic case for the device to go into. And uh, these are some uh, red fittings for the case, as well as the hardware to put the case together. And we also get some instruction books. Okay, so when it comes to uh, soldering the through hole components onto the board, I would recommend starting with the components with the lowest profile. Uh, by that I mean the ones that stick off the board the least because uh, it's easier to solder the smaller components, the lower profile components in when there is less on the board. So to identify what components go where, each hole, each through hole for the component has an identifying number. So we can see that we have some resistors here. We have R1 and R3. In the documentation that was provided with this kit, we can see here that resistor R1 is a 100K resistor and R3 is a 200K resistor. So it's a case of searching through our pile of resistors and finding those values. Now to find the value of a resistor, you have to identify the color the bands are that are on the outside of the resistor. You might be able to make that out, you might not, but there is different color bands around the resistor. I'm going to leave a link to a website in the description where you can input what color these bands are and it will tell you what value this resistor is. You could also use a multimeter to measure the value uh, of this resistor. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of the resistors in place I'm probably not going to video that because it's going to be very repetitive and probably a bit boring to watch. But we'll come back once we've got all the resistors done. Okay, so here I have all the resistors populated on the board and all of the uh, all them soldered in, the legs trimmed and so on. Um, these resistors are of a pretty low quality uh, and it's kind of hard to show you that much detail on the camera but the colour coding on the resistors is very faint sometimes the colours aren't very clear, so for example the difference between red, orange and yellow uh, is very very subtle and not the same on all the resistors. So it's definitely vital to have a multimeter uh, for this and to meter all of the resistors before populating them. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to populate some of the other components and we'll uh, check back in once the board is a bit more populated. Okay, so after a few hours of soldering, this is the finished uh, product, or at least the finished uh, PCB portion of this project. 
Uh, just to note, this doesn't come with a power supply, so I've just kind of bodged um, something up here uh, in the power jack, and that's going off to my uh, bench power supply. And I've also got the test leads uh, that come with it plugged in here. Now, I haven't turned this on yet, so let's flip my bench power supply on and see what happens. Okay, the back light's on for the LCD, and there we go. Uh, it is booting into the oscilloscope and we can see it's running so if we touch the probes here we can see it's registering that we're touching the probes lovely okay let's go ahead and look at the case that this comes in Okay, I found the case a little bit complex in figuring out how it went together. So just in case it helps someone, I'm going to go through the order in which the plates go into the case. So this is the top piece here. This is the piece uh, with the holes for the buttons, but no hole for the LCD. The next piece, the next two pieces are the same and look like this with the hole in the middle for the LCD. The next piece, I'm just going to take the sides off, the sides are both the same. The next piece is this one. Then we've got the sides and then this in the back with the holes. Okay, and here we have the finished product. Uh, we can see again if we start touching probes, it's uh, picking up that there's some something going on there. Um, the hardest part of this, believe it or not, was figuring out how the case went together. And I was left with some hardware afterwards and I've noticed that I've missed some screws inside. However, it is solid enough. The thing I would say is the cutout for the USB port isn't really uh, in the correct place. Um, but all the switches and things are functional. Um, so I can't really complain about that. And the buttons are also all functional. Um, yeah, so I hope you found this video uh, helpful. Um, this kit cost me fifteen ninety nine. For fifteen ninety nine, I can't really complain for an oscilloscope. Uh, I mean, obviously this isn't going to do all of the functions that a very expensive one does. But for the odd task here and there, I'm hoping it'll serve me quite well. I will do a video, um, you know, in a few months' time after I've, I've had a chance to uh, use it a wee bit. Uh, but if you have found this video helpful or useful at all, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like and comment. Thanks for watching.